When you look at your life, the way you live it, many times you would have noticed that you are ruled by compulsive emotions. If one has to go beyond the limitations or beyond the compulsiveness that a certain type of accumulation creates within us, either one has to raise into a different level of awareness, consciousness with which he can become free or another way is he has to transform his energies. Raising to higher levels of consciousness generally is very deceptive because the nature of the mind is such, it can deceive you till the end. People believe they have changed many, many times. Simply because their situations have become little more conducive, they have changed. If situations become extreme, again they are back to the same place. So transforming your energies is a more sure path, a more certain path. You are walking on solid ground and all you need is a certain dedication and involvement in a certain practice. If one works sufficiently upon his energies, the right sense of understanding and guidance, if it is done, very easily one can get enlightened on the level of his energy. His energy will be enlightened. His consciousness might not have gone beyond, but his energies will be enlightened. Shiva also has spoken about it. Shiva says, when the spinal thread is touched, a light begins to glow in and around you. If you place the whole attention on the Shushumna Nadi and if it is properly touched, then it becomes alive and it glows. Once it glows, slowly the energy will mature within a very short period of time and energy will become enlightened. It glows. You have a glow of an enlightened being, but you don't have the consciousness of an enlightened being. If you stand, if you simply sit quietly, you are a powerful being. You open your mouth, you're a fool, that's how you will be. This is easy to achieve, all you need is dedication, especially when I am around, this is very easy to do. If you just touch the spinal cord, it can just glow. The spine, we call it Merudhanda. Merudhanda means uh, it is the axis of the universe. A human being <clears throat> can live just as a biological entity or he can transform himself into such a thing, he's almost like the center of the universe. How your spine is functioning, how the energies in your spine are functioning right now determines almost everything about where you go. Within the spine, if you know the physical construction of the spine, you would know there are two holes on either side of the spine. This is the Ida and the Pingala, the right and the left channels. Beyond this, there is a central space, it's an empty space flowing through. In the spinal cord, there is an empty space. This is the Shushumna. Now, bringing a balance between these two will establish you well in this life. It'll make you effective in the world. It'll make you handle life aspects well. But if your energies enter into Shushumna and in Shushumna you can bring various kinds of uh, qualities into Shushumna, fundamentally Shushumna is attributeless. It has no quality of its own. It is like empty space. Empty space is there, you can create anything you want, isn't it? So, once en energies enter into Shushumna, we say, you will attain to vairagya. Vairagya means, raga means color, vairag means no color. No color means you have become transparent. If you have become transparent, the advantage of being transparent is, right now if what's behind me is red, I turn red too. <laughs> if what's behind me is blue, I turn blue too. Wherever you are, you become a part of that but nothing sticks to you. Only if you're in a state of vairag, then you will dare to explore all dimensions of life when you live here. 
So all this mechanism is fundamentally built into the spine, not in the brain, it is in the spine because spine is the root. So when you do the Kriya or when you generally in your life except for sleeping postures, it's good to keep the spine erect. That itself will do many things to you. So this Yoga Namaskar, it activates the lumbar region of the spine in a tremendous way, strengthens the muscles along the spine, giving it a reinforcement so that as one ages, the collapsing of the spine which causes pinching of the nerves does not happen and if already there's damage is setting in, the best way to regenerate your spine would be by doing Yoga Namaskar. It has all-round benefits for the entire body. Yoga Namaskar is a very simple and complete process by itself. A natural upsurge of energy will happen if you just keep your feet together and sit down in a squat. Uh, we don't want too much energy to happen, so the next best stance is to keep your feet in line with your shoulders, just the same width as your shoulders. Twenty-one is a good number to do. If you cannot do that, start with seven, slowly. Every two days, one extra if you do. In about forty days, you will be at twenty-one, which is a good number to do. You will see it will make a phenomenal difference. Just because you're doing a simple few things to relax and activate the spine. Activating Susumna Nadi is central to the yogic path toward enlightenment. There are some ways to activate the Susumna Nadi. First is breath control or pranayama. A particular practice known as Nadi Sodhana balances Ida and Pingala Nadis, facilitating the awakening of the central channel. As the breath flows smoothly between both nostrils, it is believed that energy moves through Susumna, clearing blockages and opening the path to higher awareness. Second is meditation and visualization. In deep meditation, practitioners focus on the spine, visualizing energy moving upward along the Susumna Nadi. By directing attention to the space between the eyebrows or third eye and eventually the crown of the head or Sahasrara Chakra, meditators can facilitate the ascent of Kundalini energy and open themselves to higher states of consciousness. Third is Asana. Physical postures, especially those that align with the spine, help activate the Susumna Nadi. Poses like Tadasana, Sirsasana creates a conducive flow of energy along the spine. Fourth is Mantra and Sound. Chanting sacred sounds such as Aum is another powerful tool for activating Susumna Nadi. Sound vibrations resonate with different chakras and can help to remove energy blockages, allowing for the free flow of energy along the central channel. When chanted with devotion, these mantras purify the mind and open the inner pathways for spiritual energy to rise. The ultimate goal of spiritual practice, particularly in the yogic tradition, is to achieve samadhi or union with the divine consciousness. This state is characterized by the dissolution of the ego, a merging with universal awareness and the realization of the true self. The activation of Susumna Nadi is the key to unlocking this experience. When Kundalini rises fully through the Susumna, piercing each chakra, the practitioner experiences a profound shift in consciousness. At the highest level, when the energy reaches the Sahasrara Chakra, one attains a state of pure bliss and enlightenment. The activation of Susumna Nadi is not only the path to enlightenment, but also a journey of personal transformation. As the energy ascends, it purifies emotional and psychological patterns, clears past karmas and brings about an inner awakening of truth compassion and wisdom. 
this ancient wisdom serves as a reminder that true enlightenment is not something to be found outside oneself but lies within waiting to be awakened through dedicated spiritual practice namaskaram